We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding. Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you entered into the house of... Bless you once again, Apostle Dr. Schaefer, the pastor, interceding Christian center, to God Almighty be the glory. Hallelujah. Let me first encourage you. Beloved, I do understand that we're in a time period where the enemy is doing all he can to cause confusion and to cause you feel as if God is not on your side. But trust me, God is on your side and he's going to ensure that you make it through this. If you have the audacity to believe him, then he has what it takes in order to bring you through to a better place. Amen. Amen. Recently, Lord dropped inside of my spirit that came from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61, beginning in verse 1, we find some great and powerful words. These words were actually read again by Christ Jesus in Luke chapter 4. And in the word that's found in verse 3 says, Beauty for ashes. God will give you beauty for your ashes. So let's go into sanctuary and hear what Gus said to the Lord in a sermon that's entitled Beauty for Ashes. Come on, let's go. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Let me give you a scripture and then we're going to be seated in the house of the Lord. The word of God coming from Isaiah chapter 61, uh, beginning at verse 1. It says, the spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the openings of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To point unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, hallelujah, the planting of the Lord, and that he might be glorified, and they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is so much. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. It's been a few weeks since I've been behind the sacred desk, but I thank God I feel comfortable behind the desk on this morning. Hallelujah. I want to go back to verse 3 of what I read for just a brief moment, to, for just a brief moment, because I want to grab up a couple of words. I want to grab up a couple of words that I will use for this sermon on this morning, amen? And in these words it says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. I minister to you for your edification, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. It's amazing that the church today seems to have, uh, com they seem to be a little confused about what beauty is. The church seems to be just a little bit confused about what beauty is. Uh, uh, in, in many places, the church thinks that beauty is having uh, 200,000 people, but if the people don't know Jesus, that's not beautiful. In many places, they think that the, it's beautiful. The church think it's beautiful when you wear the latest Versace red bottom shoes and all those things like that. They think that it's beautiful. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But what we find out in the house of Lord, that beauty is a whole lot more than what people think it is. What we find out in the house of Lord, that beauty is the essence of living a holy life. Accepted in Christ. Beauty is the essence of loving the Lord with your whole heart. Beauty is a whole lot more than what the church think it is. Hallelujah. Beauty for ashes. If you've been saved for more than 15 minutes or so, you'll find that this is one of the most popular phrases in the Bible. 
along with things such as uh, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You'll find those popular phrases. But this phrase here, my God, my God, is, and I said phrases because, I say phrase here because people don't know the rest of the story. They don't know where it all came from. They're not sure where it came from. Hallelujah. It is a very familiar phrase to Christendom. It's a very familiar phrase to Christendom, but I don't have time to even deal with, deal with where this phrase came from to give you the background of this phrase. I don't have time this morning to deal with, but I'm going to give you the short answer. The short answer is comfort. 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 Comfort from what? Comfort from a self-imposed burden. A self-imposed burden that had been revealed to us. The children of Israel were in a self-imposed burden. They were in a self-imposed burden when the prophet Isaiah wrote these words. Hallelujah. They were outside the comfort that they could have if they were in the Lord. They were at the time they were in captivity with the Assyrians. The Assyrians had taken them captive. The prophet Isaiah was a prophet that stood or stood between the both, both the lines. He was with Israel before Israel went into captivity. He cried out against Israel, telling them that their sin was going to lead them into captivity. The prophet Isaiah was there when Israel was dragged off into captivity with the Assyrians. They at the time were captive with the, with the Assyrians. And they and all they thought that was beautiful was now in ashes. The country of Israel had been destroyed, had been torn down, had been destroyed, and literally rendered into ashes. Ashes. And these words were glorified in Luke chapter 4, I believe it's Luke chapter 4, when Christ, on one of his recorded sermons, uh, when he entered the, the, the synagogue at Nazareth, and he was given, as in the tradition of the, of, the, of the synagogue, he was given the word of God to read. He was given the word of God to read. The scrolls were passed around. And the person who received it read it. Jesus said basically the same words as he read these things. He, he spoke at the hearing to the hearing of those in the synagogue on that day. But as he read this, they rejected him. They rejected him. They preferred to keep on their ashes and to get rid of beauty. They preferred to hold on to what had kept them down, had kept them oppressed, had kept them in a place of un unmerciful pain. They preferred to hold on to what destroyed them more so than what would build them or what would rebuild them. Now, as I minister this thing, I want you to take from this, this, and this must be something good the Lord's getting ready to drop inside of someone's spirit. Amen. Because the enemy's trying all he can to distract. He's trying all he can to disturb. He's trying all that he can. Hallelujah. But what I want you to understand here, I'm making sure that you heard me clearly. I said beauty for ashes, not beautiful ashes. Beautiful ashes, not beautiful ashes. I'm talking about a transformation. I'm talking about a transformation. I'm, I'm not talking about things staying the same they were. I'm talking about a divine exchange taking place. Beautiful ashes would be like putting a, a dress on a pig. But you put a dress on the pig and if you put makeup on a pig, if you put the pig in the finest clothes, a pig is still just a pig. It's still a pig. Back in the 1950s and 60s, they had this show on TV. It was called Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed was a horse, of course, and Mr. Ed could talk. And Mr. Ed, they would have hats on him. They would have shirts on Mr. Ed. They would have shoes on Mr. Ed. They would have eyeglasses on Mr. Ed. But there was still no way that you could not still identify Mr. Ed as a horse. No matter how much you dress up junk, you cannot make junk into something that is not. You cannot. 
Because the very DNA of things are even in the ashes of that thing. Well, we have to understand, though, before we even get deeper in this thing, we got to understand what is ash. What is ash? What is really ash? What ash is, we have to really understand what, if we understand what ash is, then we'll understand what a wonderful transformation that God is talking about when he'll say, he'll take your ashes and he'll give you beauty. My God, my God. Ashes are, are a noun, uh, uh, meaning that the precious, the present state of an object has been broken down to its lowest state. And it's beyond its original state. And it's been reduced. God made man from dirt, not ash. Ash is a state that's beneath even dirt. Because dirt turns into ash. Oh my God, my God. Dirt turns into ash. But to reduce something to ash, you have to either have time or fire. In time, dirt becomes ash when it decomposes enough. Or, or in a rapid amount of time, fire could cause dirt to become ash or anything to become ash. In time, all of this physical world will be ashes. God is working on this physical world. It's going to be ashes. It's going to be ashes. And God says that in the last days that, that not only is he going to let this turn into ashes, but he's going to give us beauty for ashes in the last days. My God, my God. Hallelujah. See, fire is the only thing that can purposely reduce something to ashes. But when something becomes ashes, though, we, we know about ashes, that ashes are the driest state that you can find. So when something becomes ashes, the very moisture of that thing has been drawn out. The very moisture, every, all evidence of moisture is now gone. Hallelujah. Even dirt and dust, no matter how dry they are, still has some evidence of moisture. Hallelujah. But when all of the moisture is gone, when all of the fluid is gone, when all of the natural current oils are gone, when the material is broken down to its final state before the wind blows it away as the wind blows away the chaff. Hallelujah. This is what we're talking about. My God, my God. In the Bible, it says that there are many occasions of people sitting in ashes, sitting in ashes. Ashes were not just a literary term, but ashes was something that they physically set in. That they physically set in. Hallelujah. So when tragedy hit and judgment came because of sin or as a sign of repentance, those affected by the judgment would literally sit in ashes. Hallelujah. They would sit in ashes. This was not something that only the people of God would do. But it was an acceptable response throughout the ancient world. Because you have records of people in Egypt sitting in ashes. Babylon sitting in ashes. Assyria sitting in ashes. Out in the far east sitting in ashes. Ashes were a sign of repentance. A sign of being placed at your lowest state. Ashes were a sign of throwing off the worldly trappings of this materialistic driven world. Placing things under the subjection of the Lord God. So it's no coincidence that Jesus, in the closing words on the Sermon on the Mount, we are told not to lay out treasures in the earth. Because when we lay out treasures in the earth, in the earth there are things that will destroy our treasures because our treasures are not divine. The earthly treasures are not divine. My God, my God, my God. We're told not to lay out treasures. We're told not to value things of this earth to a point where we are not concerned about things in heaven. Hallelujah. Don't value the things on the earth because on the earth thieves can steal things. On the earth moth can eat away things. Uh, on the earth pestilence can burn, turn up things. On the earth, my God, my God, termites can eat up things. On the earth, the wind, the sun, the rain, and all these things can destroy things in the earth. So we're told not to value things in the earth because things in the earth will eventually turn into ashes. Abraham in chapter 18 of Genesis was petitioning the Lord God for Sodom and Gomorrah. In particular, he was petitioning the Lord for his nephew Lot and Gomorrah. 
And Abram took the time to bow down before God and he sat in ashes is what I believe. Hallelujah. And he told God, he said, Lord, I'm merely dirt. And I'm sure he probably picked down, reached down and grabbed some of the ashes up and said, I'm merely ashes. I'm, I'm absolutely nothing. We've got to learn to humble ourselves so much that God is exalted higher. We've got to learn to push ourselves or push this flesh down, push this flesh underneath subjection, whereas God is lifted higher. We've got to learn to be as low as the ashes, not just as low as the dirt, but as low as the ashes when it comes to comparison to God Almighty. Hallelujah. So I'm sure as Abraham said in that dirt, in those ashes, and intercede for his nephew, it caught my attention that, that Lot had done some terrible things to Abraham. Lot was possibly even stealing from him. Lot was trying to, trying to cause Abraham to be poor where he could be rich. Lot had done all these things to Abraham, but, but instead of Abraham pouring out on him, instead of Abraham uh, asking the Lord to send down flames on him, my God, instead, what did Lot do? Instead, what Lot, instead, what Abraham did, what Abraham did, Abraham interceded for him. We ought to learn from that. My God, when people despitefully use us, we've got to learn to intercede for them. Oh, my God, when people despise our name, when they talk about it, we've got to learn to intercede for them. We've got to learn to love them even when they don't love us. We've got to learn, hallelujah, to stand in the gap for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a lesson for all of us to learn. Even the man Job. While mourning his losses, had lost all of his children, had lost half his cattle, lost servants and houses, had lost all these things. Hallelujah. He sat in ashes. He sat in ashes and he repented. He repented while we was in this ashes. This before he even knew that the enemy was really attacking him. This before he knew that, that, that the enemy had went before God and accused him. He did not know why he was underneath the attack. But instead of fighting against what had happened, he began to repent against God. Instead of defending himself. Oh, let me say this right. Instead of defending yourself, you've got to learn to say, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm underneath this attack. But Lord, if there's anything in my life, if there's anything in my heart, anything in my actions, my, my mind, anything that I do. Lord God, I repent of it. Oh my God, my God, my God. If we can only learn the ways of Job and throw aside that which has been destroyed, throw aside the trappings of this world. If we can only learn the way of Job, hallelujah, instead of throwing aside the things of this world, instead we wrap ourselves literally in the ashes of this world. We grasp the hole to the ashes and we do all we can to try to put together the ashes, my God. Don't you know that the word of God says that I will make all things beautiful in his time, in my time. In other words, I'm going to fix what's broke. Stop trying to fix what's broke when God says a God-sized task. When God says something that he's doing, we need to stop trying to fix what God said he's going to fix. My God, my God. The thing about ashes, though, is that ashes, as I said, they are a lower form, less than dirt itself. And they, they are totally void of moisture. Moisture. The human body is 70% water. So it lets you know that we do need what? Moisture. And hallelujah. And in the spirit realm, there are moisture that has to come, too. We need moisture in the spirit realm. This is why God said there are oils that are associated with my holiness. Hallelujah. There's oil. This is why God describes Holy Spirit, hallelujah, as a raging river, as a pooling water inside of us. This is why, because there's moisture that's needed in the spirit world. My God, my God, my God, my God. See, 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 ashes in its previous state was not ash. It was treasure. <laughs> hallelujah in the previous state of ash it was treasure hallelujah if you go to a beautiful mansion that a fire has burned down and stuff and they say it told the mansion out and it burned it all the way down to the foundation all you're going to find there are going to be what ashes so but previous before it became ashes it was a big beautiful mansion but because of what fire had done it was reduced to nothing but ashes 
nothing but ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the state that it is in now is no longer the state that it is in. It is now in a state where it doesn't have the ability to be used the way it should be used. The prophet Ezekiel described the things of God saying this. He described the, the glory of God rather departing the temple. He said the glory departed the temple. And glory is also a metaphor. It's a metaphor that's a result of moisture. It's a result of moisture. Hallelujah. We would not have glory, a glorious garden unless moisture came. Either moisture was going to come from the sky or it was going to become based on first lady water in her garden. It wouldn't happen unless we had moisture. Hallelujah. We can have all the sun in the world we want. But unless moisture come down from the sky or come down from the water hole, then it will be absolutely positively nothing. And everything that's sitting in the garden would eventually turn into dirt and then eventually turn into ashes. Ashes. But the prophet Ezekiel described the things of God. He talked about the glory leading the temple as, as a way that, that moisture, the moisture of God, the pneuma of God was leading the temple. Hallelujah. When the glory departs, it's because the oil of God is no longer present. It's no longer present. It happens in many places. When the glory of God leaves, that's because the moisture, the oil of God has left the place. Hallelujah. The oil of God is no longer present. When the oil is gone, vibrancy is gone. When the oil is gone, hope is gone. When the oil is gone, my God, my God, peace is gone. When the oil is gone, joy is gone. When the oil is gone, hallelujah. You won't ever find a cowboy walking around dry, riding a dry saddle. No, he has a way that he adds moisture back to that cowhide, to that leather. He puts on something called saddle soap, and the saddle soap adds the moisture back to it, my God, my God. We've got to learn to add the moisture of God back to our lives, to allow God to saturate us with his moisture, to saturate us with the oil of hope, with the oil of peace, with the oil of gladness, with the oil of joy. We've got to learn to let God do his great work on the inside of us. Because when the oil is gone, the oil is gone. The oil is gone. We've got to learn the lessons here about ashes. When something becomes dust without the intervention of God, it remains dust. Hallelujah. God reached into the dust and he grabbed the dust and he began to shape the dust and he breathed into the dust and the dust became a living being. Oh my God, come on now, you need to understand. If someone breathes on you, there's a certain amount of moisture that comes out of them when they breathe on you. My God, my God. When someone breathes, there's no such thing as a dry breath. There really isn't. People tell you there is. There's no such thing. There's moisture. There's water droplets that come forth from your mouth. When you breathe on somebody, why? Do you think we're supposed to wear masks now because of the growth? Because the moisture is the droplets that come out. So when you breathe, moisture comes forth. God breathed into that dust, and that dust became a living being. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And God, the same God who breathed into that dust and allowed that dust to become a living being, is the same God that's going to restore us. And how he's going to restore us? He's going to breathe into us and hallelujah. Allow the oil of God to come forth and allow us to become living beings again. Oh, stop, Pastor. My God, my God. Hallelujah. With something becomes dust without the intervention of God, it does remain dust. It remains dust. It has regressed from a, to a lower state. God told Adam, he said, Adam, because you have sinned. God even told him before he sinned. He said, the moment you sin, you're going to die. And God said, because you have sinned, Dust you came from, dust you shall return to. In other words, I'm pulling the oil out. In other words, I'm pulling the moisture out. In other words, I'm going to allow you to return back to the state that you were in. I'm not going to allow you to be who you could have been, my God. My, we've got to learn that the oil of God, hallelujah, is so needed in this day and age for us to live and breathe and have our very being. We cannot live without the presence of God in our life. We will never go from the state of being just ashes and becoming beauty unless we let the Lord live in our lives. My God, my God, hallelujah. What once was beyond repair is now within the scope of being able to be repaired. Hallelujah. 
and to repair and replace the ashes. The Lord regenerates us by giving us his moisture, by pouring out the oil that God, only God has, that only God has you. You can't go and you cannot dig for this oil. You cannot drill for this oil. This is only oil that God has. This is oil that's reserved for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, you, don't think, um, um, you don't think it says that, but if you read the scripture, it says beautiful ashes in the very next set of scripture, a set of words that it says is that we are given oil. We're given oil. The oil of what? Of gladness. The oil of gladness can restore us. Oh, my God. How many people you know that are dry because they are dry water of oil of gladness? I know many people who are dry because they have no more oil of gladness in them because the world's situation has caused them to, to allow themselves to be dry and water more. Why is that? It's because when people begin to depend on the world more so than they do depend on God, they see the world's situation and they think that all is lost because the world's situation. But I'm here to tell you, beloved, hallelujah, if you, hallelujah, allow the Lord God to come into your life to pour out his oil of gladness inside of you, then you will find hallelujah, that your life will never be the same. You will find that the things of God are worth way more than the things of this world. You will find that the presence of the Lord God Almighty will surround you, will infatuate me, will come inside of you, hallelujah, and allow you to grow to a place hallelujah, of total joy. Hallelujah. See, once was once was, was, was once beyond repair and now has new hope. Hallelujah. To be repaired of the Lord, we have to learn to accept the things of God. And when we accept the things of God, hallelujah, the oil of gladness begins to pour in out of, through our lives, around our lives. As the oil of gladness begins to pour out, we'll find that we're able to reach people for Christ like never before. When they see joy on the inside of us that they cannot explain, when they see peace on the inside of us that they cannot explain, then you will find, hallelujah, that God Almighty is working things out. And what was once ashes is now becoming beauty. Now becoming beauty. Hallelujah. And the thing about the scripture, the scripture I was reading in verse 3 in particular, it says that, that, that uh, first of all, after... God gives you beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. He gives you the oil of gladness. We talked about that. But he said you'll put on a garment of praise. A garment of praise. My God, my God. A garment of praise, my God. Oh, my God. If all we would praise his name, hallelujah. Oh, how wonderful it is to praise the name of the Lord. The psalmist called this and said, oh, if the church would just come together and glorify God. If the church would come together and put on a garment of praise and worship God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. But rest assured one day that God is going to make everything that is ugly beautiful. One day God is going to replenish the earth. He's going to clean the slate. He's going to remove all the things that the enemy has thrown before us. Death, temptation, hate, pain, racism, all types of hate will be cast into the lake of fire because when God comes back, he's going to remove the ashes off of the earth and he's going to replace it with the beautiful state that the earth should be in. My God, my my God, hallelujah. I was thinking about this thing, and I was like, my God. Lord, the more I think about this, the more I realize that this is kind of similar to us receiving our new body. Us receiving our new body. In the current state we in, our current body is merely ashes. <laughs> hallelujah, because we're going to return to dirt. So we're merely ashes in our current state. But one day when Jesus cracks the sky, one day Jesus is going to crack the sky. He's going to say, come on up here with me. Come on up here to this place, hallelujah, with me. And when he cracks the sky, hallelujah, it says that those whose bodies were in the grave, whose spirits before the Lord God Almighty, whose bodies in the grave shall be coming up out of the grave. The bodies shall come up out of the grave. And the bodies shall meet the Lord in the sky. And when the body meets the Lord in the sky and the spirit comes there, God is going to cast that body back down, totally destroy those things that are ashes. And he's going to say, here is your new body hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Here's your new body, my God, my God. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my new body. I'm tired of aches and pains and anguishes. I'm tired of hurt and hate. I'm tired of these things that are in the old body that God no longer wants me to have. Hallelujah. I'm tired of the things. I can't wait until the day when God says, hey, hey, come on up here. Come on up here. I can't wait until I get the grand exchange. I can't wait until I get my beauty and hand in my ashes. I can't wait until God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I thank God. I thank God. I thank God that he's going to make a way out of no way. I thank God that he's going to turn darkness into day. I thank God that he's going to take these ashes and cast them into the waste bin of tomorrow, into the waste bin of things that never will be remembered again. I thank God, hallelujah, that I no longer will have to carry around my ashes. I thank God that the ashes will be cast on the outside. Hallelujah, I'll put aside these things of this world. Hallelujah, I thank God that sin will no longer tempt me. I thank God, hallelujah, for the beauty that he's going to give me for the ashes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As Christ hung on the cross. Hallelujah. As Christ hung on the cross. All the sins of the world were put upon him. All the sins of the world were put upon him. So in other words, all the ash, all the ash of the world was put upon him. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. You know, as I think about it, I, I'm one of those people that I have sort of dry skin, have dry skin. And because I have dry skin, after I take a bath or a shower, I have to put oil on. Other words, I'll be real ashy. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. And as I think about that, I think about how one day I have a body I ain't got to worry about being ashy no more. Hallelujah. I have a body that will be in the perfect proportions. It will have everything it need and none of what it don't need. A body that's impervious to pain, to hurt, to anguish. A body that's built and designed in similitude to the body that Christ had when he was resurrected and similar to the original body that Adam had when he first came to the earth before sin entered the garden. Beloved, I'm encouraging you right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is the time to exchange your sin. Now is the time to turn the sin back in. Now is the time to, to set yourself up for future success. Now is the time, hallelujah, to set yourself up for hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. Now is the time to exchange your ashes and receive the beauty that only God Almighty can give you. Now clap your hands and glorify God right there, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Clap your hands and glorify him again right there, my God, my God, hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you glory, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for your word being fresh and renewed on the inside of us. We thank you for the oil of gladness, oh God. We thank you for the garment of praise. We thank you, Father God, that you have promised, oh God, even in this season that we're in, where many are panicking, many in the ministry are panicking, many are losing their faith. My God, my God, hey God. But Father God, you warned us that there will be a great fall on the way. But many are losing their faith, oh God, because they're seeing desolation all around them. And because they're seeing desolation, Father God, they feel as if you're not in control. But I thank you, Lord, that I know that you're in control. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God, that the desolation is not sent to destroy us, but to destroy those things that are not right for us. Now, Father God, I ask you bless, oh God, even those underneath the sound of my voice who don't know you, Father. I'm praying right now that something will spark on the inside of them and they'll have an understanding that they need Jesus as Lord to be added to the kingdom this day. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Thank God. Amen. 
Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise again there if you would be loved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'm talking to those who are listening in on our YouTube channel and maybe listening on our Facebook channel as well. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord, you need to get to know him. You need to get to know him. And also, I'm speaking because the Lord's told me to say this, to talk about this whenever I have a sermon or anything, to talk about the rapture. I feel that the rapture is going to occur more sooner than later. No, I'm not crazy enough to give a date because I don't know. Jesus said no one knows but the Father. So therefore, I don't know when the rapture is going to occur, but I know it's going to occur because the signs are there. And if you happen to be one who have been left behind, you know you're left behind because the rapture has occurred. Many people you know are saved, are gone. And you find yourself in a situation where the enemy is coming down upon you, you will find yourself in that situation. But by the grace of God, he's allowed this sermon to break through. To break through the net that the enemy is going to set up, the solid wall that he's going to set up to try to prevent the word of God from going forward. The Bible says that in the last days, the word will become scarce. The enemy is going to work to do all he can to keep you from getting saved. But through grace of God, God's grace, he's allowed you to see this. You can be saved right here and right now. You can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior right where you are. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Oh, it won't get easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be real tough. I promise you. But what we do know. It's the moment you come to the point where the enemy just tells you that you're going to have to accept him or you're going to have to accept death. You accept death and the moment you accept death, you may be hearing the sound of the guillotine going forward, coming down in order to remove your physical head. But the moment that you pass away on this side of the Jordan, you'll wake up in the presence of God Almighty. You'll wake up walking the streets of gold. You'll probably be met at the gate by St. Peter. Even Jesus himself might meet you at the gate and usher you into the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. You might be met at the gate by the 24 elders or a loved one who's been raptured or a loved one who died before the rapture. You might be met at the gate by them and they'll bring you into the presence of the Father. But here's the thing, if you don't accept Jesus, because he's the only way, he's the only truth, he's the only life, if you don't accept him, you won't be met in such a cheery manner. God bless you, love. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. If the Lord so touched your heart and you want to be a blessing to Interceding Christian Center, you can be a blessing to us by going to the Apple or the Android store and downloading the Givelify app. Download the Givelify app, amen. And once you download, open the app up and find Interceding Christian Center. You'll see a picture of my lovely wife, the First Lady of Interceding Christian Center, amen. Uh, Pastor Tina Schaefer, you'll see her there. And when you see her picture, you know you're in the right place and you'll be able to be a blessing to us in that way. Or or if you have a cash app, our cash app is dollar sign interceding CC. Dollar sign interceding CC. Amen. You can be a blessing to us in that way. And I thank God for those who are, have been such a blessing over the last few years. Amen. Some have never even been to the new sanctuary, but glory to God, they give constantly. And we thank God for you. Amen. I'm praying that the Lord bless you in a mighty fine way. Let us pray out. Father God, we bless you. We glorify you. We honor you for your mercy and grace, which endures to all generations. Lord God, bless, oh God, those who are done the sound of my voice today may hear your word today. They may hear the cry of Jesus knocking on their door, the heart of the, the door of their heart, oh God, that they may be saved. Add to the kingdom as you see fit. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you with the love of Christ. I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.